So, hello there everyone and welcome. It is Aniran here and today it is time for another episode of the FIFA 20 Newcastle career mode. You guys really enjoying the first three of this series. So thank you so much for the support. Now, obviously we've gone through the whole transfer window. That was really what the first three episodes was mainly focusing on. We also started the Premier League season and we are unbeaten in our first four league games. So very good start to life in this series. Currently sitting in fourth position in the league. Realistically, that won't continue, but at least it's nice to get a good start. Now, we'll be playing four games in this episode alone. I'm actually feeling a little bit better, lads. It's all good. I don't feel it anymore. We're, we're good. Now, last episode was dominated by one man. Danny Olmo scoring two goals in that one. Danny is now the fourth uh, top scorer in the league, or technically joint second, along with Leo Bonatini and Chucky Lozano. He was your player of the episode for last time, and he makes it two out of two for the new boy. It's insane. He's the only player to have won player of the episode, we only signed him in episode number two. He has had a ridiculous start to life on Tyneside. Now, I think I'm going to go back to the point system that I had before when it comes to player of the episode. I think if I make someone boosted in overall potential every single time they win it, we're going to end up with a very overpowered squad. So before, I used to have a system where if a player got 10 points in which they can be earned through winning, where you get three, coming second in the vote where you get two points, or coming third in the vote where you get one point, if they got 10 of those points, they get boosted in potential. Given dynamic potential is a thing this year, I think we're going to go with boosting attributes rather than boosting potential. So the new rule is anytime anyone gets five points, they'll get boosted in five of their key attributes by plus one. So basically, if someone wins twice or wins once and comes second once, they'll get boosted and probably a decent chunk towards a new overall. So it is time for the first game of this episode and it really is a baptism of fire. We're going to Anfield to face one of the best teams on this game, the likes of Alisson, Van Dijk, Salah and Mane all in this squad. Alrighty then, Liverpool versus Newcastle. This is a Another fixture that's already happened in real life. Ended 3-1 in the end to Liverpool. Jetro Willems scored Newcastle's goal. Thankfully for the Liverpool fans, Jetro Willems isn't playing. But they've certainly got other players to watch out for. And Danny Olmo is certainly one of them. Three goals in his last three matches equals that man there, Sadio Mane. And that is pretty decent company. Now, I mean, what can we expect? I mean, we got a draw against uh, Tottenham. We got a win against a pretty depleted Arsenal side. Mo Salah on the ball. Firmino's ahead of him. He's going to go at Atal. Egyptian versus Algerian. He's found Parejo. Ball in was towards Firmino. Dubravka came and the advantage was apparently for him. All right. I mean, I'll take it. Not sure how it was uh, against Liverpool there. It seemed like he came out and just completely stacked into Bobby, but um, I'll allow it. This is Parejo again. Trying to turn away from Shelby and finesses that inches wide of the top corner. Mane up against DeAndre Yedlin. Yedlin puts in the tackle, but doesn't get there. Jordan Henderson fires that one back across, but he was offside. Once again, another example of a perfectly good stand tackle being put in, and I'm not getting the ball. Maybe I came across as a little bit salty last episode. I wasn't at all. We had a really good episode. I wasn't that annoyed at the time. It is just a little bit frustrating when you keep putting in good stand tackles and you don't get the ball off the AI. Like, how else am I meant to? To win the ball. Have I just got to wait for them to give the ball away? Share there with the through ball into Danny Olmo. DeAndre Yedlin is running on here and DeAndre Yedlin is on the ball. Joe Linton will be in the center to pick out. There he is and he tucks it into the bottom corner. Joe Linton gives Newcastle the lead at Anfield. He celebrates with the away supporters. It's a great breakaway. DeAndre Yedlin down that right hand side, flexing his attacking work. He's not always amazing in defense. Not bad, but he's certainly Certainly good at stuff like that. Nice ball in, and Joe Linton scores his first goal of the series. A little bit belated, to be honest with you, but he has been involved in four goals already in this series. He's just been assisting them rather than scoring them. He's finally got his name on the score sheet now. First goal of the Premier League season for the Brazilian big man. And uh, despite all the early pressure, I'm not going to lie, Liverpool looked as if they were going to firmly slap us and put us to the sword. It is us that has taken the lead. Weird. Weirdly, it's the wings where we seem to be attacking Liverpool, even though they've got some of the best fullbacks in the league. Almiron swings that one in for Shelby, and it is 2-0 against this former side. John Joe Shelby has scored a second. How are we doing so well in this football match? What is going on? Liverpool have not turned up defensively at all. Alexander Arnold and Andrew Robertson are having an absolute shambles. Almiron puts it in. Uh, Shelby's 
lucky, actually, because he just put it straight down the middle. Second goal in the league, John Joe Shelby adds to the goal he scored against Norwich. Suddenly, I mean, as soon as we scored, Liverpool have just looked so uncomfortable on the ball as well. Here's Andrew Robertson. He's had a nightmare defensively, but he's played that into Bobby Firmino. This is back to Robertson again. Nice block from Lascelles. It came to Henderson, but Dubravka is equal to it. Fabinho trying to put the ball in. It's deflected. Dubravka punches clear, but back into danger. Fabinho into Salah. What a block by Lascelles. It wasn't Salah, sorry, with the shot. Who is that? It's Parejo. I don't know why it didn't come up. Danny Parejo there with the shot. Vital block. That is such a good block from Jamal Lascelles. Now it's a corner to Liverpool. Jordan Henderson will swing it in. It's towards Joel Matip. Bouncing around and cleared off the line by Yedlin. But someone's gone down in the area. And I think it has been given as a penalty. Fabian Scher goes into the referee's notebook. And, oh, it's just a collision. It's literally just a collision. I think I was pressing X to try and get the ball away. I thought it was the man on the line. That's where the ball got cleared away. But clearly I wasn't controlling him. I thought I was, but I was, cl I was clearly controlling Cher. It's been given as a penalty. Salah with the immediate step up. And he's hit the crossbar. Salah's missed the penalty. It's a massive reprieve for Newcastle United. That is absolutely huge. And now we're going up the other end. Isaac Hayden into Miguel Almiron. This is the counter-attack of dreams, lads. Almiron to the center. Isaac Hayden puts it to the back stick. Tanny Olmo, though, can't get it over the head of Allison. That is a huge that was a huge opportunity for Liverpool to get back in the game. It was a bit of an unlucky penalty to give away because I didn't realize I was controlling Cher. I thought I was controlling the man on the line. Seemingly not. Almiron's picked the ball up here. Liverpool are so poor in, in possession. And this now is Son Maximin. And that is 3 0. What a finish from Alan Son Maximin. It's the first goal of the series from the Frenchman. Get your Gucci headband out, Sonny Jim. You deserve to show it off. Liverpool give the ball away. They could have been 2 1. Now it's 3 0. And Son Maximin racks it off the crossbar. All the power in the world behind that Allison can't stop it Klopp can't believe what he's seeing what is going on we're actually beating Liverpool 3-0 a first half that you're probably never going to be able to fathom we are 3-0 up against the European champions goals from Joe Linton John Joe Shelby and Alan Sant Maximin along with a missed penalty from Ahmed Salah paint a picture that I don't think anyone could see coming here though come Liverpool down the right hand side this is Mohamed Salah up against uh, Atal At Yusuf Atal has, has claimed another victim today, and it's Mohamed Salah. That is huge. We're coming forward. Danny Olmo has slotted this into Joe Linton. He's gone round the keeper and made it four. What is this? What am I witnessing? Liverpool nil, Newcastle four. Joe Linton has a second. I can't believe what I'm seeing. This is amazing. Joe Linton with the composure goes around Alisson, who's been made to look like a fool in this game. Has he even made a save? I've just realized we haven't even had that many chances. I think we've actually had four shots in this game and scored them all. I'm pretty confident. Like, we're not even dominating. We've probably had the same amount of shots as Liverpool. I was just saying in the build-up to the fourth there that Yusuf Atal has claimed another victim because he is... He He's pocketed someone again. Here comes Joe Linton. Joe Linton looking for the hat trick, but blazes it over the bar. It's quite astonishing that given Liverpool are such a counter-attacking side, it's the counter-attacks that have completely broken them apart. Can you even believe what you are seeing? Florian Lejeune tries to get that one clear. Gonna come through though to Mo Salah. The clean sheet might go here, and it does unfortunately as it's bouncing around with only 30 seconds left to go. Came from a little mistake, a bit of a misunderstanding between Lejeune and Lascelles at the back. Maybe the problem with introducing a centre-back like midway through the game, that might be my fault. Lascelles couldn't get there. Ball came through. Dubravka did really well, actually, to block from Salah. Neither Yedlin nor Atal could get back onto the line. That is the final action of the game. It is Liverpool 1, Newcastle 4 in their own backyard. We have arrived on Merseyside and absolutely annihilated the European champions. Joe Linton was man of the match, 9.3 after grabbing two goals. Almiron as well, influential in that one. Lascelles, Yedlin, Atal, Dubravka, Shelby, St. Maximin, all with really good performances. I mean, highlighting something I actually mentioned earlier, Liverpool had the
the same amount of shots on target as us. Joe Linton scored two goals. Really good performance from him. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to praise him. An impressive performance from Joe Linton. Miraculous result there. I, I've not really experienced anything like that, I don't think, for a while. But it does obviously highlight a few things, and that's probably that the game is a little bit too easy. So sorry to break from the, the beautiful moment there. But I think that's probably the fact of the matter. So I might have to install some sliders for the, the remainder of this episode, see how it affects things. We've also got a press conference to attend here. I don't know why we've got one ahead of Brighton in a, as opposed to one ahead of Liverpool, but okay. Time though for that game. Brighton next up in game number two. We're back at St. James's Park. Just to confirm, we are on ultimate difficulty after that result there against Liverpool. We were playing on ultimate for that game. I'm expecting more of a challenge. I'm hoping for more of a challenge, honestly, because I don't want this series to be too easy. I had seen a few of my mates, a few of the other career mode YouTubers saying that ultimate difficulty was a little bit too easy. So here we go. Will it be more of the same or will it be a new challenge? Joe Linton is the man to watch out for going into this, obviously after two goals. Like London buses, isn't it? You wait for one for so long and then he ends up scoring two in the same game. Here he is on the ball again. Joe Linton there with the finesse and hits the crossbar. What an effort from the Brazilian. Long range curling effort. It just doesn't quite dip enough. Trossard there into Sonny March. Back to Trossard again. Ball in is deflected off Cher and into the side netting. So Yusuf Atal gets the ball clear. Your hand bash can't get there. He does get to that header though. This is Trossard. Back out wide now for Shaletto. Lovely header inside, but Atal Hooks it away and into Ki Sung Young. Brighton keeping it in our half there with Pascal Gross. Your hand back again on the ball. The Iranian with a good ball in for Trossard. And what a volley that is from him. The Bravka, I think, got a slight touch on it. But Leonardo Trossard, the young Belgian has given Brighton the lead. Uh, persistence, really. They just kept us camped in our own half for about sort of six or seven minutes in-game straight. Kind of peppering us constantly. Atal did a decent enough job, but the cutback kind of bewildered him slightly. DeAndre Yedlin lets his man get goal side or get ahead of him even. So Brighton take the lead. It's the uh, curse of the green kits, isn't it? Watford did this at St. James's Park to us last time. Your hand bash tries to get away from Atal. That's not an easy task, my son. He's managed somehow there to get away from Cher, who's far too out on the wing. He needs to be more central. That's the reason why your hand bash gets there and into the side netting. Now here we come with Miguel Almiron who can burn away from Shalotto. Really good work there from Miguel Almiron and he's still going. Joe Linton's the only man in the center. Might have to wait for another option. It's coming with St. Maxim in, but Webster did well to read that. We're still coming forward though with Joe Linton. Great reverse ball into Ki Sung Young. And that is the equalizer right at the end of the half. The South Korean does the business again. Whenever he's called upon in terms of his starting 11, he seems to grab a goal out of nowhere. Again, good work from Joe Linton. That's the hold up play that I love to see from him. Maybe I was harsh on him. The fact he got so many assists from doing stuff like that before. But great work from him. Finds that ball inside the center backs and Ki Sung Young on his left peg is never going to miss from there and it's 1-1 very important goal that changes the halftime team talks as well back into Murray Glenn Murray there though straight at Dubravka again Hayden looking for the right time to play a ball that might have been it as well this is Joe Linton needs a little bit of help in the center might get it it's Almiron what a save Matt Ryan hand back up against at all. That has been a battle of the ages down this right-hand side as DeAndre Yedlin heads the ball clear. Yet again, Jahan Baksh versus Atal is reignited. Ball down the channel here into Pascal Gross. Back to Jahan Baksh again. Block comes in from Fabian Cher though. Ball in, cleared by Lascelles and it'll come all the way to the man who's just come onto the pitch. Fresh legs, Doniel Marlin and he skips past his man. He's still got plenty to go past but he's burning away from all of them. Doniel Marlon bearing down on goal, pummeled away by Ryan, ball back in again from Marlon, bouncing all over the place and cleared eventually. Instant impact from Marlon, here he is on the ball again, this now is Ki Sung Young with the finesse! Oh wow, 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 I thought that was going top corner. Doniel Marlon now doing defensive work as well, love from him, been all over the pitch since coming on. And here is Doniel Marlon now going forward, Doniel Marlon cut outside, ball back in was towards Joe Linton. Brighton trying to contribute something of their own. It's a good ball in, but Atal recovers well. Looks as if he was second best there for a moment. Ki Sung Young, Sont Maxim in. 
Back to Joe Linton again. Dinks it over the top into Son Maximin. And that is the winning goal in the final minute of the game. It is a huge goal from the Frenchman. Gucci headband, get it to him now. It's hero status from Alan St. Maximin. Brighton thought they had the draw in the bag, but we kept probing Joe Linton with the ball. He gets another assist. How many, that's like five or six assists now for Joe Linton in this series already. And first time on the volley, St. Maximin gets it through the legs there of the Brighton defender as well. We complete yet another comeback at St. James's Park. It's, uh, to be honest, it's harsh on Brighton. They contributed so much to that game that they did deserve the draw. Man of the match is Joe Linton with two assists. It gets him a 9.2 rating. He Sung Young with an 8.5. Definitely the best of the midfielders in that game, even regardless of the goal. Into training and Danny Olmo is becoming even more of a feared opposition. 81 overall now. Game three though, we at least take a little bit of a break now from the Premier League and instead we're in Carabao Cup action facing Reading of the Championship. You can see the two sides in terms of ours. It's definitely a second string one. Like so Dwight McNeil, Don Daniel Marlon and Atsu up top. Eberechi Eze comes in for his first start as a Newcastle player. Whilst in terms of the back five, it's almost completely different. Willems, Lejeune, Dummett and Darlow all in. But their team is okay. They're without one of their main centre mids though. He is injured, so that might be a bit of an issue for them. I'll tell you who I'm really excited to see in this game actually. Eberechi Eze. I don't feel like he's really had an opportunity yet to uh, get much game time, which makes sense. You know, he's the younger of the, of the guys signed. But uh, this is the sort of game where I want to see him uh, really take control or put in a really good performance so I can, you know, know that I can trust him in Premier League games. Here's Eberechi Eze from distance and what a save from Raphael. Comes to McNeil and he can only volley it into the side netting. Big chance for the former Burnley man to get his first goal for the club. It was quite a tight angle but with a pretty much open goal you've probably got to be scoring there son. Second half. Let's get this one sorted lads. I don't want this going into extra time. That's the last thing anybody wants in the Carabao Cup. Yard on back into Azaria again. Lovely skill to get away from Willems. It's now his Adrian. Great ball in. DeAndre Yedlin has to get it clear. Bravka now has to as well. Came, didn't get there, and it's off the outside of the post. Big wake-up call from ourselves. Dubravka, not even Dubravka, what am I talking about? It's I'm doing a massive injustice. It was Carl Darlow caught in no man's land. As it so happens, it wouldn't have counted anyway because he would have been offside. This is Danielle Marlon though at the other end. Marlon with the really good effort from the corner of the box. Raphael is up to the task. Reading have got a ball on here if they choose to find it, and they have done. This is Adrian. I need Carl Darlow. And in the end, he wasn't required at all. Adrian misses the target. Reading certainly with the better of this second half so far. Now into Lucas. Ball in. Jetro Willems looks if like he was caught under that a little bit. Yardom now breaking away. And again, wide off target once more. Yeah, Lejeune was flying across. And I think he would have blocked that if the shot was on target. But still, Eberechi Eze now able to stretch his legs. He's got room to run into as well. Looking for the one-two with Daniel Marlon. He gets it. Eberechi Eze has done it. 1-0. It's a sucker punch because Red have been on top in this second half, but in his first start, Eberechi Eze, having signed from QPR, the youngster, the prospect player, has written his name into the newspaper headlines. It's a lovely one-two, as simple as you like, between himself and Marlon. Christian Atsu's got DeAndre Yedlin running ahead, and now we really are flexing our muscles. DeAndre Yedlin can try and cut this one back. He waited a little bit too long. Still on the ball, though. Atsu out into Eberechi Eze from range. Well blocked, though, from Yardom. Eberechi Eze running on beyond him. So far, it's his goal that separates the two sides and that will win us the game. Christian Atsu looking a little bit dangerous as well. Ki Sung Young, and that is just wide from him. It won't matter. It's a 1-0 victory, and it's down to the young Englishman, the new boy, Eberechi Eze. The new signings really are coming in clutch. And we progress now to round four in the League Cup. Eberechi Eze won us the game and won himself man of the match as a result. 8.6. Daniel Marlon. I mean, I, I'm running out of words to describe his start so far. But this is going to be a final action of this one. And we're away from home against Leicester here right at the end of September. We have got the likes of John Joe Shelby, Danny Olmo, St. Maximin and Joe Linton. The usual brigade plus Daniel Marlon who makes an upgrade from starting in the Cup to starting in the league. The King Power Stadium. We've returned here many a time on this channel. As the home side at one stage, I always blag on about it, but we did do a career mode series with these guys. Interestingly enough, it was actually the same season they won the league. So, Newcastle fans, not gonna lie, you, you should expect your team to win the Prem this season. I'm nervous about the likes of Jamie Vardy. Pace is such a big thing on this game. Jamal Lascelles and Fabian Scher are not the slowest customers, in fairness, but he is something else. If James Madison uh, or, or the likes can pick out a ball over the top, then 
then we could be in trouble. Dominico Berardi is an interesting one, actually, because I'm pretty sure I signed Dominico Berardi for Leicester in the series that I did. We'll ping that here into Mazuaku, who's signed from West Ham. Vardy here down the left. Not many people in the middle. Harvey Barnes was arriving. So was Atal. That's bouncing around. Atal again gets it clear. Still Marlon on the ball. Cuts inside. Still on it and trying to get past Benkovic there. I mean, the kid isn't short of confidence. Harvey Barnes will deliver the corner. Dubravka's come. Dubravka's punched. But that's Tielemon with a dink. Well cleared away off the line by DeAndre Yedlin. Super clever stuff there from Tielemon to try and get the ball over everybody. And he succeeded bar one player. We have Yedlin to offer for the fact we're still at nil-nil. And we also have Madison there because he couldn't get the ball out of his feet. Thankfully, Dubravka is able to come and claim. This will be a final action, really, the first half. Can we get another late goal in a 45 minutes? Shelby puts it into a dangerous area. lascelles has got his head on it. Still bouncing around, but Leicester get it clear. Atal can just yam it back into the centre. What a ball as well. Shelby, though, lifts it over the bar. What? Yeah, flipping Yusuf Atal has got superpowers. I'm convinced of it. Down the line here for Damari Gray. Very tricky customer to the edge of the area here for Madison. Goes for the effort. Blocked by Shelby. Great ball through to Damari Gray. And he's going to be thankful that he's offside because he's missed the target there. Looking for support. He gets it in Tielemon. Vardy back out now, sorry, into Damari Gray. There's a man at the back post here if he can be found. Gray might go alone. He cuts it back all the way to Hamza Chowdhury. Will the chance be gone? This is Tielemon now. Now over into Dominico Berardi and a massive save from Dubravka right at the death to keep it. At nil-nil, Berardi sinks to his knees. He knows that was the chance to win them the game. Grab all three points right at the death. Man of the match, Yusuf Atal. The kid carries on his brilliant start to life on Tyneside. 7.6 rating, matched though by Danny Olmo and John Joe Shelby. So here's how your table stands after today's action. We're not the only overachievers in the Premier League right now. Bournemouth also unbeaten after the first seven games. We're both on 17 points right now with Spurs, Chelsea and Watford chasing us down. Watford would actually be top of the table if it wasn't for us beating them. So the usual though, in terms of United being down in 15th, Arsenal down in 19th and City rock bottom. This game really needs fixing to be honest with you, doesn't it? In the background though now is the Hall of Fame. This is where all the records and accolades are kept for this series. Now, originally this was based on only one game in preseason, the one that we played against Torino. But I've decided to now make it based on all of preseason because why should we include one game in preseason just because we played it and not the sim ones so if you're wondering why certain things might have changed in terms of like joe linton got like has increased more in terms of assists for example in comparison to what he actually got today that is the reason why i'm now counting those group stage matches the first three in pre-season meanwhile on the top right of the screen you'll be able to vote for your player of the episode today a lot more options i feel last time i think danny olmo was pretty much nailed on really but this time in reality i think there's a lot of different options coming from the cup game also coming from our league adventures as well that is going to wrap up what has been a really positive episode even though we ended up with a draw there the nil nil against leicester if you enjoyed that one as much as I did then slap a like on the video and subscribe if you are new to the channel you can also follow me on social media it's at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta but it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye